So I mentioned in my last video on the QB78 that I was waiting on a new gun to come and it actually did the next day. Finally got my Diana Storm Rider. Been waiting on this since early April and uh, I was not disappointed. Really like this gun. Uh, incredible performance for what it is. Uh, 200 bucks from Air Gun Depot and you can get yourself a really nice little PCP rifle. And uh, the deal with these, it's a pre-charged pneumatic and instead of pumping it, uh, you know, the pump on the gun, you use a big uh, hand pump. It's kind of like a bicycle pump, but um, built a lot differently. You can't use an actual bicycle pump on this. The PCP hand pumps go up to a much higher pressures up to about 3900 PSI. The gun actually pumps to, to 2900 PSI, which puts it in the range of being pretty easy to do with a hand pump. You know, other guns with bigger tanks or higher pressures, you need to have like a, basically like a scuba tank to fill it with, or your own air compressor that has to be, you know, again, not like an electric compressor that you air up your tire with, but a really high pressure one for PCP and it plugs in there. I've got just like a, a plug that I bought that fits in there to keep dust out for now. Uh, and the other thing about this gun is it's a, it's a repeater. It actually has a seven shot magazine that goes in there. Also comes with a single shot tray so you can just shoot it like a single shot if you want. Um, advertised at 900 feet per second and this might be one of the few guns that is actually more powerful than it's claimed. Um, it definitely hits hard and so sort of just doing all this yapping here, I'll take a few shots. Magazine slides right in and it's held in place with a magnet. And it has a bolt pulled open after the last round, which is nice. Has a pressure gauge underneath there, so you can keep an eye on it. And uh, on the subject of being better than advertised, the, uh, the manufacturers claim you get 40 shots out of the uh, 177 caliber version or 30 shots out of the 22 which is what this is I actually do quite a bit better than that but you know I'm just plinking so uh, you know that big power curve is not something that that bothers me too much just shooting at cans but I get probably well I'll say definitely I get 40 shots and uh, when it gets down to the end of that it, it's, it's still hitting harder than my uh, QB78, which is about 500 feet per second. I probably actually, last time I shot it, fired more like 50 shots. Um, and you know, if you're, you're uh, doing serious target shooting, you're gonna see your point of impact changing from the velocity dropping off at that point. But again, you know, plinking at cans at close range, you can get a lot of shots out of it. And it's not too hard to fill. No issues with leaks. I, I, uh, so far I've always refilled it after I'm done shooting, so it sits, um, you know, fully charged overnight, and the gauge has never moved at all while it sat. So it's a pretty good rifle. You know, there. When I was looking at these, there I saw a lot of negative stuff about the uh, Generation 1 Storm Riders. This is a Gen 2. Um, the most common things that I heard about were feeding problems. It seemed like, uh, you know, from what I saw, 
most if not all of them didn't feed smoothly at all. Pellets were hanging up. It was even kind of shaving pieces off of pellets and probably causing poor accuracy. And people had problems with the magazines in general jamming and not working well. I have not any, had any problem at all like that with this one. It, it feeds smoothly every time. The magazine has worked flawlessly every time. Um, no, no issues at all. So I guess they, they really straightened things out with this uh, Gen 2 here. And another improvement is that uh, the moderator on the end there is actually much more effective than the Gen 1 one. And a moder moderator is basically the, uh, the less scary word for a suppressor that's used on air guns. And you know, apparently that's, that's completely legal when it comes to air guns. People get into arguments on the internet about that. Um, personally, uh, you know, just in terms of uh, my personal safety and protecting myself from the law, I'm not worried about something like this, but personally I would not mess with buying or making any kind of air gun moderator that's, you know, a separate thing that you can thread on because, um, you know, if the feds wanted to, they could say that that could be threaded onto a firearm. And it doesn't matter if it would be destroyed by the first shot. If it can lower the sound of the report by one decibel, they, they can claim that you have an illegal suppressor if they want to. But um, in theory, they're totally legal, and I don't think there's ever been an issue with it. Certainly not with one like this where it's permanently attached. But it does make the gun quite a bit quieter. So, you know, I've been back into air guns for a few years. I've got springers, I've got CO2 guns, I've got pumpers. Really wanted a PCP. Uh, these have been really expensive for a long time, but in the last few years, there have been a lot of uh, pretty inexpensive ones that are finally coming out, including this one. Uh, it was still, you know, a good chunk of money to spend, you know, 200 bucks for the rifle plus uh, hand pump, which I'll talk about that also in a little bit. But uh, I wanted a PCP, and you know, I got the uh, the last stimulus check in you know end of March or something like that, and I figured I would finally take that opportunity to splurge and buy one. And I had a price range that I was looking at of up to you know 400, maybe even 500 bucks that I was willing to spend. And I actually, even in that price range, I couldn't find anything that I liked better than this. Uh, because what I really wanted was something with a wood stock with iron sights on it, because I don't really like using a scope just for plinking. And I also really wanted a repeater, because that's a pretty huge upgrade over just a, a single shot gun like my other air guns that I have. And uh, the only other ones that really even came close were the Diana. K98 PCP, which is um, basically a not very accurate looking uh, PCP air rifle copy of, you know, Mauser K98 rifle, which is almost twice the price of this, and it's basically the same thing as far as the size of the air tube and the performance and all of that. So functionally pretty much the same gun for twice the money. And the other one is the Benjamin Marauder, which is way more expensive, closer to 500 bucks or so, 400 at least. And that has a wooden stock at least, but and, and it's a repeater, but no iron sights, and it's a re really big, bulky, heavy rifle. Whereas this is really nice and slim, 
and light and it was just the perfect thing so I ended up buying this because you know I really I couldn't find anything better even to cost twice as much so I picked this up like I said for 200 bucks from Airgun Depot other places have them but they're usually more um, and there's pretty much nothing to complain about there really the only real complaint I could make about this thing is that the bolt is a little bit fragile you can see it's kind of skinny there especially on the handle and especially with uh, the Diana Bandit which is the uh, the pistol and carbine version of this it's kind of like a 2240 where you it's a pistol but you can put in a little shoulder stock on it you can put longer barrels on them um, th these tend to break you know it would be fine if it was made out of stainless steel or something but it's some kind of soft Chineseium alloy alloy rather and uh, they do tend to break especially on those uh, bandits and chaser pistols and stuff like that so I just handle it carefully when I pull it back I try to uh, you know put my fingers as close to the receiver there as possible and uh, you know so it's not putting so much torque on it and when I push forward to load I usually push with my thumb on you know the end of the bolt there rather than the bolt handle uh, the trigger is fantastic that's another improvement over the gen 1 model uh, the, the Gen 1 is non-adjustable. I forget if it was a single stage or double stage or whatever, but non-adjustable. This is, uh, it is adjustable. You can see the two screws there sticking out of the, the trigger. And I actually haven't even fiddled with it at all because it's been excellent right out of the box. And I'm picky about triggers. Um, so that's great. And uh, I think it's time to take a couple more shots here. So about the hand pump, which you need, you know, at a minimum, you need a hand pump to fill one of these, or you can use a scuba tank or whatever, but that, that gets into being real expensive when you get that stuff. But uh, hand pumps from the, uh, you know, the online air gun shops, air gun depot, pyramid air or whatever, they pretty much start around like 130 bucks. Uh, and they go up to way more than that, upwards of, you know, four or five hundred for fancy ones. There's hill pumps that are made in England. And, uh, you know, supposedly they're way better quality and all that. And then aside from those, you have the ubiquitous Chinese PCP hand pump, um, which are all over Amazon and eBay. And they cost generally around 50 bucks. You can even come across them sometimes as low as like 20 rarely if there happens to be some kind of sale and sometimes they'll try to be sneaky and have them for like 80 or 100 bucks but you can get them for 50 anytime anywhere and you would think from the price and that they're from China and whatever that it's some kind of you know thing that'll barely work maybe you can get one to start with but it's not going to be very good and won't last long and it'll break and maybe cheaper to just buy a better one in the long run but from my research and my very limited experiments, uh, experience, um, they actually seem to be excellent pumps. I can't actually find anything negative about them from anyone who, who owns them. The only negative things at all that I've seen about them are from people who own the expensive pumps and, then, and they say that, you know, these cheap ones, it's not going to be worth it, they're going to break or whatever. But they haven't tried them. Uh, everyone I've seen online that actually has one says that they're great and they last for years and they're just as good as the expensive ones 
maybe even better than the, than even the really expensive ones. So uh, I found mine to be pretty easy to use. It takes about 75 pumps to to pump this up. And right now, all the shooting I've done so far, it's used up about half a charge. Um, it's in the middle of the green there. And, you know, it, it takes some effort. You have to, when it gets towards the end, I have to pretty much put most of my body weight on it to get it to pump. But it's not terrible. Um, and, you know, 50 bucks gets you going. And, of course, once you have that initial investment of the pump, you could use it on a lot of different guns. So, uh, it's been absolutely fantastic so far. Uh, awesome gun. The, the feeling of shooting this thing, the best way to describe it is it's just like effortless power. Um, you know, especially being able to crank off seven shots at a time out of the magazine without pumping it, without breaking a barrel. Uh, without loading single shots, um, it just you know you've got seven shots ready to rip and it slaps the target hard. Um, so, really awesome gun. You know if you've thought about the Storm Rider and you've heard a lot of negative stuff about it, um, I definitely wouldn't let that stop you from picking up one of these the Gen 2 ones, which is pretty much the only ones that are available anywhere now. I don't think you can even find a generation one one. The easiest way you can tell is the Gen 2 has the front sight kind of far back here on the moderator, whereas the, uh, and it's also longer. The first generation ones, this thing is shorter and fatter and the front sight is way out on the end. And also the Gen 2 has those screws in the trigger for adjustment and the Gen 1 doesn't. But pretty much the Gen 2 ones are the only ones you're going to find anyways at this point. So I guess that's pretty much it. I don't think I've ever been happier with an air gun purchase. And uh, I could keep blabbering on all day, but I'm going to turn the camera off and shoot some more.